Good afternoon. George Hepworth, Grover Park Consulting. Let's build Mike's Mobile Library. Let's finish building Mike's Mobile Library. Today I'm going to take the final look at the construction aspects of building Mike's Mobile Library. I'm going to show you the second part, part two of linking images uh, in a Azure Blob Storage account to records in a SharePoint list, which represent volumes or books in our library. Uh, we use the hyperlink field, as I discussed in the prior video, rather than the uh, attachment field, which is part of the SharePoint list, partly because uh, my previous experience as an Access developer leads me to think that attachment fields are less desirable. This worked really well, really quickly, and uh, it's very effective both for the browser-based version we're looking at here and on a smart device like a phone or an iPod. So if you're ready, let's dive in. Here we are uh, looking at the development version of Mike's Mobile Library in my Microsoft 365 Power Apps development area. I played the application and we'll just step through the process of taking an existing publication record, an existing book, and adding to it a picture or an image of the cover of that book and assigning it to that record. Do that with the one that I've already set up, then I will start from scratch. I will I'll try to make that as efficient as possible so as not to bore you. But we'll go from beginning to end and repeat the process with a different book. And finally, then I will go back into the code behind these and, ex show, and explain what uh, we're doing and how we're doing it. Let's go to the publication screen first and select the one that I have prepped for our demo. And there it is, the creators. Notice that the record here does not yet show an image. We'll go to the edit screen where we can do that. There are a couple of things here that we can that we need to look at. First, if you already have an image in the Azure storage location, if you've previously taken that image and you simply want to assign it here, you can provide the name of that image and link it this way manually. If it's in the library, or the catalog of the library. You can also scroll down through this list and select it for the publication that you're looking at. Or the third way to do it, and the way we're going to look at now, is to create a new image by taking a cover photo. This launches the screen where we take publication images, cover images. I've got my camera set up, so I'm looking at me. And if I hold my book up in front of the camera so that the camera can take a picture of it, I'll do that this way. I'll get it set up, adjust. Now, of course, if I was doing this with my phone, I'd have a lot better control over this. I'm kind of wobbling around here trying to get it in front of the webcam camera and let's go right there and right there snap my cover shows up in the preview it's a little bit off center but i am going to replace it later this is for demonstration purposes only give it a name so that the power apps application can find it I can assign the PNG extension or not. It works either way. Notice that we have two buttons now because we came to this screen from the edit publication screen rather than from the initial menu. When we came from the initial menu in our prior video, we only had available this option because we didn't have an existing publication to assign it to. However, now that we have selected a publication to edit and we're going to add and link this image, we can link it directly from here. 
click the button. That'll do a couple of things. Push the image into my Azure Blob Storage and then create the link. Takes a minute. The uh, software that runs the uh, presentation takes a little bit more resources, so that process goes slower than if I were just doing it directly with my cell phone. Apologize for that delay. So now, when we come back to the edit screen, you can see that it has placed the name of that image I just took, appended the PNG extension to it, and we're ready to save it. Uh, it's not showing that image here, which means that it's not yet linked to it. But if I click the Save and Continue button, it will create that linkage, or I can save it and go back. Now, this saves and returns to the Edit Publication screen. This saves it and stays on the same screen. So I'll just go ahead and do that this way now. And you'll notice that it immediately updates to reflect the images now associated directly with this publication. Uh, and if I scroll this list, it's not yet part of this list. I think that's a bug that I want to address. Actually, I want it to show up here, so I'll, I'll do that separately. Okay, so now we have created the linkage between the photo that we just snapped and the record of the publication that pertains to that. So let's go back to our edit publication screen, publication images there. Let's look at how that all works. We'll go back now to the edit screen, pop out of runtime into design mode and take a look behind the scenes at what's going on. First, this button simply changes a variable, true-false variable. We're going to edit the cover photo link. And this input box here responds to whether or not that variable is true or false. Okay, uh, if this variable we just set is true, in other words, if we click this button and it's set to true, we flip it from true to false or false to true, then a couple of things happen. First, we have the card, which holds the name of the publication cover link. It's set so that its display mode is dependent on the value of that variable. If it's true, then we can edit. If it's false, then it's view only. And this toggles it back and forth between view and edit mode. The other thing that happens is that we have an additional label here, which is normally invisible it also responds to the value of that variable. If var edit cover photo is link is false, then it's invisible. If it's true, then it's visible. And I'll just toggle this, I'll just play it again really quickly and show you. Two things happen. The input box is now editable. You can see by the border around that it's editable. And this warning label becomes visible. Toggle it off, back to display only. To look at the code in the other screen where we're actually taking the cover photos, we need to go actually go there. So I'll navigate there first. Uh, and you can see that I have lost my uh, image from before by stepping out of uh, play mode into edit mode and fooling around back and forth, and I ended up losing my my image. And, and without any uh, value in this text field, my buttons are disabled. But we can I'll just quickly show you that uh, they respond to a value in this text field. So let's go ahead and close 
the runtime. Uh, let's look at very quickly the visible property of this control. It's true. And the display mode. depends on whether or not there is a value in the input field here. If the length of that text is greater than zero, we can edit, otherwise it's disabled. And the same is true for uh, the other uh, controls here. So we don't need to dig into that anymore. Let's look at what happens if we select this button, or actually it's a control group with several items together, controls linked together, and they act as one. So the on select for that group is this. First we check to see if in fact uh, we do have a um, name in our cover photo name field. Now this is strictly speaking redundant because we're not going to enable the button unless it's there, but this is sort of a cover your basis move. If it's not there and you try to click the button, then it's going to say enter a name for it. Now, the next step is we're going to check that value and uh, this is the most recent value that we, we used, creators.png. This conditional basically says if there is already an extension, if you find the dot in that text, and it's just a D because we've replaced it with the, our test here. If there is a dot, which would be the dot in front of an extension, if that is greater than zero, then we'd simply take everything in that text field up to, but not including that dot. Return that as our name for that particular image and append the dot PNG extension. If there is no dot, if it's just the, the straight name, then we just take the straight name and append the PNG. That allows us to uh, account for whether a user puts in an extension or not. If they put in, say, like a JPG or some other uh, BMP type file, we're going to convert them all to PNGs because that's what we're going to store into our blob storage is the PNG file type. The next thing it does is it runs the create file action from our connector to Mike's library images, and that's the connector to the Azure blob storage we looked at in the last uh, video. Creates a file in Mike's library using that cover photo name, and that is the one we're, we're working at. And it's going to use the image that comes from our image control there. And Varkov pick, as you can see, we set that variable. When we click the snap cover button, we update it to the stream coming from the camera. Then we set this image to that value, which is still the image. And then when we save it to the library, back to this line. So our Azure Blob Storage connector, we create a file. That's one of the actions you can use when you have that connector. We put that file in Mike's library. We use the name that we just created and we use the 
image or that stream from the camera as the value that goes in or stream the image that goes into storage then because we are saving from an existing publication and, an, and a new or an existing image we set another variable although I won't uh, go through that that's a little obscure for this point now we have again at this point we have to update our storage excuse me our list of files from the storage and we use the list folder v2 action on Mike's library images connector to recreate or regenerate or refill this variable with all of the images so that when we look at them in our lists elsewhere it will be complete so I'm going to go back real quickly for example and show you that uh, this gallery here is based on that list we just generated so when we come back and look at this this list should now include all of the images which are currently available in our blob storage so that's pretty much it as far as the, the steps we're, we're going through to take an existing publication assign create a new image taking a a picture of it with the camera and then assigning that image to the link in our list I think the last thing I want to show you before we move on to another example is in the publication list or table how that actually appears and as we said earlier in the other video and I'll repeat it here for for complete list completeness we do not use the built-in attachment field in SharePoint lists I'm not real comfortable with that uh, bad experiences in access trying to do that and I just shy it away from it although I'm sure it would work just fine but we're using a link which links a specific image at this URL to this publication specific image at this URL to this publication okay I think we have one more thing to look at let's run the application again if I want to change this and I will do that twice first of all I'm just going to click select and you'll notice that it updates this image name if I go ahead and save it now it will update that link in the SharePoint list to that incorrect image and if we go back again to our list we have now replaced image now there's the creators and it now shows the incorrect image even though that is a valid image it's incorrect so we'll go back run it again we're looking at the creators we'll scroll down our list of images find the creators select it that restores it save and continue and now it's the correct image
Okay, there it is. So that is pretty much everything we need to see, as you can as you can tell. There, there are several coordinating steps to make this work the way we want it to work, including uh, taking a cover photo, depending on whether you're coming to a new picture that's never that's not associated directly with the file with a, with a book or not, uh, whether we're changing or adding. Now again, if I were to take new new pictures and replace some of these, as I said, some of these that I don't like, I'll replace them later. But then all I have to do is replace this old bad one with the new good one. Then I can delete that image from my uh, storage location and move forward. Now, for example, this guy here uh, misspelled the name, so I probably that will be one candidate that I will uh, replace with a correctly named uh, image. At this point, I think we have seen pretty much all of the relevant parts. Uh, so with that, I think we can kind of uh, wrap up our work today wrap up our review of all of the moving parts in this application. I hope that you have found something useful in one or more of the videos. Uh, I'll come back in a final wrap up video and, and maybe uh, re 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 review some of the lessons that I learned, some of the pros and cons that I picked up as I was working with different things. As I mentioned, Several times I found working with lookup fields and SharePoint lists really troublesome. I think in future I might be more wary, wary of using SharePoint simply because that is a problem that uh, I think I don't want to in, in repeat. If, I, if there's an alternative, Dataverse might be a better alternative. I would talk about some of the things that I discovered that are really cool and uh, hopefully encourage you to take a look at incorporating Power Apps into your own access work in the future. I think it's a great way to extend the reach and, and capability of your applications. Hit the subscribe button, please. Hit the like button, please. Both of those help me create new content for the channel. See you next time.